Hey. Hi, Rabbi. Hey, Morning. Hi. Hmm. Where were we? <laughs> we were. David was. Uh, oh yeah, um, yeah. Brought Reading. that thing. I I wanna I wanna um respond. Look at that specifically. Not respond. I wanna understand. I don't wanna respond. I just wanna understand. You wanna go um, get it? Yeah. yeah. I also I'm gonna write to you or whatever when you said that every positive mitzvah implies a negative mitzvah. I'm not sure that that's quite right. I didn't actually say that phrase. I, I'm not saying that phrase the way you're saying it. I'm no, just saying you... that, but I am saying that if you say, uh, um, let's say uh, it's a positive mitzvah to say Kriyashma in the evening and in the in the morning. So I could phrase it that that if you you if you don't say the Kriyashma in the morning, you will have transgressed a commandment. Okay. Not saying it transgresses a commandment. That's not it's not the same thing as calling it a negative commandment. It's not an implied negative commandment. It's not a negative commandment. It is, but it's correct to say that if you don't say it, you will have transgressed the mitzvah. Yeah. If you don't yeah, well, sit in a circle, you will have transgressed the mitzvah. That, so that's a, that's just, it's still a positive commandment, but it's correct to say, if you don't, if you don't shake a lulav, you have transgressed the mitzvah. It's a positive well, mitzvah, but I say it in the negative like that. But the transgression. <laughs> You don't get punished at all. If I if I haven't shaken my lulav or I haven't put on filling, there's no one. I I haven't obeyed, but I haven't transgressed. You have you have transgressed. Yes, you have. Sure you have. You have you have to, uh, you have to do chuba for that. It's called transgressing a positive commandment. They call it transgressing a positive commandment. You do have to do tshuva for that. It's, a, it's okay. transgressing a mitzvah say. Um, in the time of, the, there are even certain negative ones where there's technically not a punishment for it because it's what we call, let's say, a lav she'en bo masa, a lav she'en bo maisa. So it's a negative commandment that, that doesn't have a, an activity associated with it. So sometimes speaking is called, sometimes speaking is not. But let's say speaking isn't called a misa. So Lashon Hara is a transgression. Would you get Malkus for speaking Lashon Hara? We'll have to see what he says, but it's very likely you don't. So, but that doesn't mean it's not a transgression. And we do say that you, trans even in the Rambam's list of what Yom Kippur's Mahapur and, and things, we, we do say for positive commandments, you do, you do need Chuba, you need kapara. Um, so, and so they use that language. They, it's still a positive commandment. It doesn't mean that every positive commandment has a negative commandment. It just means you can state it that way. If a, again, if a person, um, uh, and any any positive commandment, if a person doesn't do the positive commandment, then it's considered a transgression. Um, but you're right. There isn't, there isn't necessarily lashes for it. Although, the, there is rabbinic lashes to encourage somebody to do a positive mitzvah, but there's not biblical lashes. Um, but but uh, but they do like rabbinically, they do uh, apply malchus to positive commandments. So so the they, but, but that's not they, a punishment per se. That, I I would assume that's more of an encouragement. Yeah, because that only applies during like what when the type of the positive mitzvah is around. If you, you don't give a topic, you know, in order. To yeah, be well, yeah, but let's say this like in yeshiva when they used to uh, encourage us to come to davening. <laughs> not everybody was coming to davening. So I remember Ramosha once joking that in theory a person could. Um, light a, a, a person could light a person's bed on fire in order to get him to say the Shema. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, uh, and they'd say like machino, so uh, they, they even use that kind of language. Like you can give them lashes, until his soul is about to leave. Um, but, but that seems more, again, for encouragement, not, uh, not punishment. Like giving a get. You can really beat the stuffing. Right, out of it. <laughs> right, right. That's all encouragement. Encouragement to do the right thing. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that. That's uh, what I, I meant. If I said it differently, I'm, I apologize because I, 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 that's what I meant. The, uh, the, the, the it's the it's element the, of it's it's the element of disobedience that, that which we're calling the transgression. But how is that any more disobedient than if I you know forget to dot the eyes and cross the or whatever how it goes? On a document, supposing I make a, a mistake when I'm executing a get or something, have I? <laughs> no, nah, I don't know, because it's not a positive commandment. If you said it was a positive commandment to write a get, if, if, it, if it was a positive commandment to write it, let's say let's say it was a positive commandment to write to tefillin. It's not. It's called a hechsher mitzvah. But let's say it was a positive commandment to write tefillin. And then you didn't write them correctly, so then you you'd say you didn't fulfill the mitzvah. Um, there is a positive commandment to write a well, Torah, no? Right. It's 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 the question is is it a commandment on everybody to do it? I, I uh, there is some question about that, like how, who's commanded and how do you fulfill it? Yeah, but our, let's take Krishna. Let's say you said the Shema and you you just didn't say it correctly. You you so you could say I it it, it would be similar. It's a you didn't fulfill the positive commandment. Now, do you need to do tshuva for that? Um, I would assume you do. You still need to do tshuva for it. Or let's say you put on tefillin, but it ends up your tefillin with puzzle. So you didn't put it on tefillin. So. I'm assuming you would need to do tshuva for that because you didn't fulfill the positive commandment. You didn't mean to not fulfill it, but you didn't fulfill it. And since you didn't fulfill it, you would need to do tshuva. There is a discussion in, in you, you see a discussion about these kind of things when it comes to how do you make it up? How do you fix it? Because it may not, it may not be possible to fix these. Because as you were pointing out, if the time for doing it is no longer there, then how would you fix that? So, so let's say you're supposed to put on tefillin every day. So the days that I didn't put on tefillin, how do I make up for that? Uh, I, am I not be able to be, make up for it? And that might be one of the reasons that a positive commandment in some ways is more severe than a negative commandment because negative commandments I can do tshuva for, but I, it may not be possible. I mean, I can... I can do tshuva for the rebelliousness, but I can't do, I can't actually make it up. Rabbi, um, would, would yeah. the vidui encompass something like that for all the things that I didn't know that, you we know. Say, like, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Uh, but, it, it'll, but over there, it'll say, mm. So, in the thing, it says a positive commandments, negative commandments, whether they're right. whether you have to get up and do them, whether you don't have to get up and do them. So, it does it does mention all of them. Um, but yeah, I get. I mean, it definitely deserves more thought and, and study. But you do hear that kind of language around positive commandments. So, just to review before before David, uh, do you have the piece that you were reading from david oh yeah sure he's going to okay. get it. all right all right but so, before so i that, just want to review the question and then david's gonna uh, uh help us you know he's gonna bring that thing from the rabbi all right so let's just read the language again um which so <laughs> this is mitzvah eight and it goes like this that is that he commanded us to imitate him so in Hebrew, lehida mot bo, lehida mot bo, dome to be similar, lehida mot bo yit ale, kfi hayecholet as best we can. Okay. 
He commanded us to imitate him, may he be exalted according to our ability. And that is his saying, and you shall go in his ways. And this command has already been repeated when he said, and to go in all his ways. And in the explanation, okay, so let's just once again look at these two psukim. This is the first one. This is, um, it says, Yakimcha Hashem Lo La'am Kadosh. God will establish you as a holy nation. Kasher Nish Balach, like he swore to you. Ki Tishmor et mitvot Hashem Elokecha. Ki could either be if or it could be when. When you keep the mitzvot of Hashem Elokecha, vehalachta bidrachav, and you go in his ways. So that's one pasuk. I just want to look at this pasuk for a second. Will it let me? Oh, well, yeah. Oh, no. I'm not. Whatever. Okay, so that is one pasuk. And the other one is. Oh, how did I lose you? If then you keep all that I have commanded you, uh, which I command you to do, to love God, to, lo to love the Lord your God, to go in all his ways and to cleave to him. So the Rambam is saying, that when it says to go in his ways, it means to imitate him in these two places. And in the explanation, it appears, just as the Holy One, blessed be he, is called merciful, you too be merciful. Just as the Holy One, be he, is called pious, you too be pious. And this matter was already repeated in different words. He said, go in the ways of the Lord, and in the explanation, it appears in Sota that he meant to say to imitate his good deeds and glorious traits by which God may be exalted is described by way of analogy. He is exalted over everything with great exaltation. So I'm just going to want to we'll just see if we can see this, the Sifri. It says, Laleches Bechold Rachav, Elu, to go in all his ways, Elu Darke Akadosh Borhu. These are the ways of God. Shenemar Hashem Hashem Kel Rachum Vachanum. God is a merciful God. Erech Apayim, slow to anger, Rav Chesav Emes. No Tzachesa La Lofim, No Seavon, Vafesh Vachatov and Ake. And it says in Yoel, Asher Yikra Vashem Vachihech, Efsha Lol Adam, Likari Vishmoshal Kajbor, Hakam, somebody be called by God's name. Lama Hamakom, Nikra Rachum Vachanum, Af Ata Havi Rachum Vachanum. You should be considered merciful and do gifts for no reason to other people. Just like Kodesh Baruch Hu is a tzaddik. You should be a tzaddik. So these are not even like uh, in the Sifri. Um, it's it's not even talking about that verse. There is that, you have that verse in, um, in, uh, in Kisisa, where Hashem, is, where Hashem tells you his qualities. Hashem, Hashem, Kel, Rachel, Vachanun. But, but they're expanding it to even other things, like in Tehillim, it calls Hashem uh, a tzaddik and a chosid. Uh, so you should be a tzaddik and a chassid. So it even expands it to those kind of things. Now let's see Sota. The garrison of Baal Paor and said to them, show us where Moshe is buried and men stood above in the upper section of the mountain and appeared to him below his degree below. Ba, 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 ba. Last time it took us here and it wasn't. Remember, we didn't find it. Oh, here it is. 
Reb Chama said of Reb Chanin, what is the meaning of that which is written, after the Lord your God you shall walk, and him shall you fear, and his commandments you shall keep, and unto his voice you shall hearken. But is it actually possible for a person to follow the divine presence? But it hasn't already been stated, for the Lord your God is a devouring fire, a jealous God, and one who cannot approach. He explains, rather the meaning is that one should follow the attributes of the Holy One, blessed be he. He provides several examples, just as he clothes the naked, as it is written, and the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothe them. So too should you clothe the naked, just the Holy One, blessed be he, visits the sick, as it is written with God, regard to God's appearing to Avram following circumcision, and the Lord appeared unto him the terebinths of Mamre. And so too you shall visit the sick, just as the Holy One, blessed be him, consoles mourners. So again, exactly how you'd come up with the full list of these attributes, I'm not sure. And up to who, who's, who is it up to, to determine if you're fulfilling the attributes correctly? I'm not sure. But the Rambam, the Rambam is saying that is the meaning of it. So my, my question was that when you see this phrase used, to go in Hashem's way. He's, he's getting this from the Sifri and the, and, and the Gemara and Sota. These are the interpretations of the Sifri and the Gemara, which is Midrash, and the, and the Gemara and Sota. But when you look at, uh, for instance, when it talks about going in the way of Hashem with regard to Avram, it says, Lot, it, it seems to be explaining what it means by the way of God. What is the way of God? Lasos tzedaka umishpat, to do tzedaka umishpat, which seems to mean to act righteously. And also, this is why we call halacha, halacha. Why do you call halacha, halacha? Because it is how we walk in the, in the way of Hashem, what we call derech Hashem. So why why? Why, I, I guess you, you could say, but we're, all right, so that's when David brought in the Rebbe's uh, teaching on that. So do you want to read that again? Now, this is what the Rebbe wrote. This is his commentary on the Mishnah Torah. And this is the first line that's come out of his uh, Sefer Hamada. And now, so this is somewhat later. that he, Now he says, he gives a brief enumeration of all of the positive mitzvahs than the negative mitzvahs. Right, right. Then he lists again, so this is eight. He says to emulate his good and just ways. And then what he gives as his source is, and you shall go in his path. He doesn't quote anything else. That's, that's the only thing. So that's, you know, uh, so that's the Deuteronomy 28.9. And you shall go in his ways. You shall go in his path. So that, that was the first one we looked at. The Rambam does quote it. That's the one towards the top here on the thing. But that's the only one. That's the only one who's giving a, a, a miniature explanation of all of them. That's the only right. okay. that's the only verse he gives. Right. And right. then he gives them then do you want me to repeat what I said? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Timely is good. The Ram Ram writes in his introduction to the Sefer HaMitzvahs, the general commands of the Torah, commands of them that aren't tied to specific actions, but rather encourage the fulfillment of multiple other mitzvahs, actually, or whatever, are not counted as mitzvahs in their own right. If so, why does the Ram Ram here count the uh, mitzvah to walk in his ways and emulate Hashem as a mitzvah as its own. Isn't emulating Hashem a general idea? After all, Hashem himself fulfills all the mitzvahs himself. Uh, so by doing And also, do you notice in his, him. do you notice he's, he, he, he characterizes it as fulfilling the mitzvahs? Yes, yes. You yes. notice that, right? He, yes. He's not characterizing that. it this way. He's characterizing, which, which is what I was asking. In other words, isn't that what it means from, from uh, when we first see it with Abraham? So, and he, he seems to be understanding it that way. Okay, so go ahead. That way, that he understands it in which particular way? 
that going in his ways means doing the mitzvahs. Okay, but but he says the explanation, the idea. Okay, okay. Yeah, after all, but that's the thing. He says. So what did this add? The idea of emulating God as much as humanly possible is indeed a general theme of the Torah. However, this is a specific command. It, uh, in this verse, not found elsewhere, which is namely to walk. He's halech, halech. Walking implies movement and change. The Torah here tells us that when doing a mitzvah, we should not remain the same as we were beforehand. Rather, we must be uplifted and transformed into something greater. Though every mitzvah certainly has a positive impact, it can remain subconscious. The Torah's command here is to ensure that the impact is recognizable and tangible. How do we ensure this? The Torah continues by saying, you shall walk in his ways by specifically choosing to do a mitzvah because it is the way of Hashem. We succeed in emulating in order for the mitzvah of demonstratively being, bringing us to new spiritual heist, heights, they need to be fulfilled specifically because they are his ways, the ways of Hashem. So it's interesting. He, he, he consistently interprets this to be talking about doing mitzvahs. In other words, he, he, he's specifically talking about doing mitzvahs, but he's, say, he's saying that the Kiddush here is to, to do the mitzvahs in emulation of God. So the mitzvahs that fall, like, for instance, when the, when the, um, when the Sifri, when the Gemara and Sota, uh, gave examples. The Gemara and Sota said, just like Hashem shows mercy and grace, so you should give things to people for, for no reason. Now, is, how, is that a fulfillment of a mitzvah, to give something to somebody for no reason? Um, is that a, it's, some of these are a fulfillment of a mitzvah, like visiting the sick. The Ram, God visited the sick, so you should visit the sick. So that is a fulfillment of, let's say, loving your neighbor as yourself. So is that what, what he's saying? Is he saying that, that when the Rambam is talking about imitating God, it's still talking about doing mitzvahs, but it's talking about doing mitzvahs. In other words, the motivation in doing the mitzvahs is to be like Hashem or like what Hashem models for us. Hashem is modeling a certain kind of behavior. He wants us to not just do the mitzvahs, he wants us to do it like he does it, with mercy, with... Um, yeah, with patience. Now, but it's still about doing mitzvahs. Because that, yeah, see, because let's say, let's say I'm just patient. Uh, I, um, some, something happened, I noticed I'm getting annoyed. And so I have techniques for relaxing and applying patience. And I, I may even repeat to myself, just like Hashem is Erech Apayim, He has patience, long to anger. I'm also going to have patience. So that is not strictly a fulfillment of a mitzvah. Or is it? So that would be that would be the question I would ask here. I would ask this of of the Rebbe. I would I would ask this of the Rambam, but I would also ask this of the Rebbe. It sounds to me from the Rambam and the fact that he's quoting the Sifri and the Gemara, who sound like this. It sounds like they're saying that imitating God's qualities is is a mitzvah. So if God is patient and I display patience. Um, I have fulfilled this mitzvah. But if, if, you, if you say, no, this has always been about doing mitzvahs, this is, this is something about how you do mitzvahs, 
or your motivation for mitzvahs that you're, you need to grow with your mitzvahs. This is not just, a, mitzvahs are not supposed to be a static, um, uh, a part of a, some kind of static program. It, it, it's supposed to be, you're supposed to move, you're supposed to grow. You have to grow in your mitzvahs. How do I, how will I grow my mitzvahs? I have to have some kind of model that urges me to get better at it. And so my model will be Hashem. When Hashem fulfills mitzvahs, he does it like this. When I fulfill mitzvahs, I have to do it like him. But it's still all about the mitzvah. It's not, it's not. So if I would just display patience, I didn't necessarily fulfill the mitzvah, or did I? So I guess that would be the question I would ask in order to clarify what's, again, if you, if you, I'm listening to what the Rebbe is saying. What the Rebbe is always talking about mitzvahs, mitzvahs, mitzvahs. He's talking about mitzvahs, but he's saying that the essential thing is that you're doing the mitzvah solely for the reason that. Yeah, but, it, it, but let's say it's it, not a mitzvah. It's I'm what? Saying, let's, say, let's say I'm just being patient. Everything we read in the Rambam yeah. would make it sound like if I was patient, as a virtue, uh, you're because, talking about. because I'm okay. imitating God. I, I'm imitating Hashem. I, I, the situation is uh, somebody is, I, I feel like somebody is being annoying and, they're, and, and I'm, I'm starting to get impatient and moving towards possible anger. And so I say to myself, just like Hashem is slow to anger, I'm going to be slow to anger. And I'm going to apply patience here. And I do. I didn't do any mitzvah though. There was no mitzvah there. I just, I just applied the quality. Did I fulfill any mitzvah by doing it? By, by displaying patience or, or experiencing patience or displaying patience at a time when I regularly be upset and with the intent, I, I might have even repeated in my mind, just like Hashem is Erech Apayim, just like Hashem is slow to anger uh, or long to anger, so too I am going to be slow to anger. And because of that, I, I, calmed down and I displayed patience and generosity, but there was no specific mitzvah because there, there was, this person doesn't even, it hasn't, the only thing that happened is this person didn't experience my rage, but they, they don't know what's going on inside of me. And, and it's not part of any specific fulfillment of a mitzvah. But if I read the Rambam with the Sifri and the Gemara and Sota, it sounds like that should be the fulfillment of this eighth mitzvah. Right. Hmm. Yeah, well, you, who, you, who you, you, you're not trying to show patience towards the other person. It's yeah. That you, well, yeah, this person, how I it, show it, patience. It, it, Look it, at the Gemara and Sota it's again. It's improving yeah, but, yourself. The Gemara and Sota right. said. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an improvement it's, it's, of it's, self. It's, 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 it's an improvement of self based on what based on emulating God. Yeah, fine. But it's not, it's not a so according, it sounds like according to the Rambam, because the Rambam's the Rambam's quoting this Gemara. The Gemara says the meaning is that one should follow the attributes of the Holy and blessed be he. Just as he closed the naked, you should close the naked. Now you could say that's Sadak or Chesed. So too you clothe the naked, naked, uh, um, and then it says uh, visit the sick. You could say that's a fulfillment of the mitzvah of Hafta Riacha Kamocha. Also, Nicho Mavelim, you could say, uh, is a fulfillment of of Hafta Riacha Kamocha when you go to visit people in Avelus. Um, so that was the Gemara and Sota. So maybe it was the Sifri that we saw. It. Um, yeah, I'm confused about what we're trying to say here. Is it that imitating God is too general to be a mitzvah? So how can he says he's not going to do a general thing? It has to be specific. So I, right. So yeah. So that yeah. So he's he's trying to say there is a specific thing here, which is. There's the mitzvah to grow. This is what the Rebbe seems oh, to be saying. Oh, that's the Rebbe. There's yeah. a mitzvah to grow. No, the Rambam's not saying. The Rambam, 
right, right. The Rambam is subject to the question, I agree. But I just want to, he quotes the Sifri. So let's just look at the Sifri. To walk in his ways. Which are the ways of the Holy One, blessed be he. The Lord, so we, we have Hashem, Hashem, Karach, and Lechanun, et cetera. And it is written, and who will be called by the name of the Lord will escape. Now, how is it possible for man to be called by the name of the Holy One, blessed be he? Just as the Lord is called merciful and gracious, you should be merciful and gracious and give gratuitously to all. Just as the Holy One is called righteous, is the Lord in all his ways, you should also be righteous. Just as the Holy One is saintly, so you should be saintly. This is the intent of all who will be called by his name and the Lord will escape. And it's written, everyone that's called by my name for my honor shall be created to him. That seems to be when he says, going in his ways is is acting like God in this list. And on the list, it says, Hashem, Hashem, Kel Rachum Vechanun, Erech Apaim, slow to wrath. So I, I'm just saying, let's take the slow to wrath one. I could, have, I could fulfill, if I, I could have intent to be slow to wrath because God is slow to wrath. Now, it, the wrath would have been displayed to another person, but I'm not displaying it because I, I am following this teaching and I'm, and I therefore applied it in that moment. So according to the Rambam, did I fulfill this mitzvah? Was that a fulfillment of a positive commandment that I was getting angry? I said, I have intent to imitate God, just like God is slow to anger. I'm going to be slow to anger. And then I reduce it. I don't have any play of anger. So according to the Rambam, did I fulfill a mitzvah? Now, the Sifri isn't interested in enumerating mitzvahs. He's just giving a general right. thing about how, right? Right. But the Rambam, see, right. the Rambam is citing the Sifri yes. as, as, as an explanation for how this is, to, in other words, to, and in explanation, it appears. Um, so he, the Rambam is suggesting that this is what is meant by the mitzvah. So what was originally bothering me was that it, in, in the Torah, when it comes to Avram, it seems to define going in Hashem's ways. And over there, when it defines it, it says, lasos tzedakah o mishpat, to do tzedakah o mishpat. That sounds more like a law. And then you, I, I'm just paying attention to what you read from the Rebbe. What you read from the Rebbe, he stays with the law the whole time. So I'm, I'm assuming that the reason he's doing, because that what he's saying is it really is about the law, but you're not, but your motivation in this case, you know, is this is how to fulfill the law. What are you thinking of? What is your motivation when you're fulfilling the law? How are you supposed to do it? How are you supposed to grow? What he calls, what he calls growing through the law, growing through the, uh, it. This wants you to grow through it. It doesn't want you just to perfunctory do it. It wants you to, to, to grow in it. So if you're going to grow in it, uh, so you model your behavior after Hashem. I'm not just giving tzedakah. I'm doing this because Hashem gives tzedakah and I want to be like Hashem or, you know, the model that Hashem presents. And that's what it sounded to me like from what the Rebbe is saying. But, but what was most interesting for me out of the whole thing was that he stick, he seems to stick with the he he's always talking about halacha. Mm -hmm. He he's not, and so that's why I'm thinking that this case would test that, because this case, the, if I say visit the sick, visiting the sick is a mitzvah. Right. If I say uh, be um, you know visiting a mourner, that's the fulfillment of a mitzvah of have to So there, it it wouldn't be a test. But what if I just was slow to anger? I didn't get angry. When I was, I, I, is well, that a fulfillment? Well, that, that's sort of like sometimes getting to philosophy. Is doing nothing? Is is that really doing nothing? I, I, like like right, in this sense, case, like, so, is, is, is sitting still that easy? If you can't control your mo movements and everything, then sitting still isn't all that easy. What you did is you did suppress your anger. That's not something. That's an act. So, I agree. Yeah, I agree. But it's so, not so, a mitzvah. So that, it's not a that, mitzvah. But it's a mitzvah. No, I'm sorry. I, I'm I, saying it's not a mitzvah. I, yeah, so the Rambam, I, this is our I, test the, case because it's not, it's not a mitzvah. 
It's not listed as a mitzvah anywhere else. The only way it could be a mitzvah is if you follow, if, if you interpret the Rambam this way, which, I, which I'm interpreting him because it's what it seems to be what the C free is saying, and he cites the C free. So, uh, so therefore, I'm interpreting the Rambam to say that I fulfilled a positive commandment when I uh, acted patiently because I was getting angry. I, I, I was getting impatient. I, I intentionally said I'm going to model God. I, and because of that, I didn't get angry. So I, I would suggest that that is a fulfillment of the mitzvah of this mitzvah, according to the Rambam. But that is not saying do mitzvahs like Hashem because there was no mitzvah there. It only became a mitzvah because I imitated God. If you're saying that so this you is, so, okay. do your mitzvahs like God does mitzvahs, then it would only apply to mitzvahs. So it wouldn't apply to the case of, of, uh, patience. of yeah. uh, patience. Right. But, but if it, this is telling you that even things that wouldn't have been mitzvahs are mitzvahs because you're imitating God, so, so that that would be the kind of test, I think, of this. Well, again, we to, uh, in one sense, even if you took, there is a negative commandment that you're not supposed to become angry. There's actually none. Believe there is none. not. There's no. There's no commandment against being angry. This actually came up in Dafyomi today. Uh, Sam Schwartz asked that question: uh, Is there a prohibition against getting angry? Surprisingly, even though the Gemara says that, uh, you know, identifies anger it's as one of the worst things that can happen. It says, Kolakoes, Komine Gehenim Sholtimbo, that if you get angry, all manner of Gehenim, uh, you know, have mastery over you uh, or over the person. So, and it's talking about how, how terrible anger is, but it doesn't actually say in the Torah, don't become angry. This is one of the, these questions about why certain mitos, why is it certain character traits are not reflected in the mitzvahs? And uh, so Prime Vital uh, suggests that it, there are certain things that are so fundamental, they're, they're in some ways before the mitzvahs. They're a foundation for the mitzvahs. Mm -hmm. So there, there's what he calls derech eretz. There's there's certain basic character traits that need to be present just to receive the Torah. And so it's not that they're not important. It's that they're so fundamental. They're taken for granted as being there even even before before the Torah. And that's what it means. Derech eretz kadmel Torah that the that Derech Eretz, Menchlekite, you know, the way, the way of the world comes before Torah, because it has to, it, it forms like some kind of vessel, but there's actually no prohibition against getting angry. But here, yet, if I, I remember if Maimonides I, discussing that a lot in this, yeah, about it's getting angry. the worst. He, he said it in Shmona Prakim. Right, he, when right. We were doing Prakim, he mentioned it, that it's, it's the, it's, it, it's, for character it opens traits, up the door terrible. for the worst. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. So, but but I'm saying this would actually be this. Uh, you could say, could we say, according to the Rambam, that if if I am that this would actually be a mitzvah, a fulfillment mm -hmm. of a mitzvah, not just an expression of good character, would actually. Rabbi, be a mitzvah. if we're going to talk about yeah. imitating God, we see that God did yeah. get angry. Now it was righteous anger, maybe, but. God got very angry. Right. So when yes, that's a legitimate he mentions question. it, that's a legitimate. he is he is using the specific question that Moshe asks when God when he says, "Show me your ways." You know, the Rahmu Vachanu. That's answering a specific question from Moshe. But if we just look at God's character right. traits in general, he gets angry. He gets well. It says slow to anger. It doesn't right. say it doesn't say he doesn't get well, angry. That's true. Type of thing. It says <laughs> era time, whatever. Slow to anger. Yeah. Long to anger. I guess the golden Doesn't say calf, yeah, is the last straw. <laughs> the golden kid. <laughs> on the other hand, he's a jealous guy. Yeah. yeah. He's jealous. And he recalls <laughs> yeah. the, he, 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 and, and he recalls sins yeah. from generations. 
Yeah, that's right. even those. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's a good point. That <laughs> that somehow this only applies to the uh, the positive commandment. Yeah, I don't. I that's a, those are very excellent questions on it. Like, how far does this go? Uh, once you get on the list, and I'm I'm sure this is discussed. I I would be actually fascinated. Let let me see if I can find something on that because I'd be fascinated yeah. on how people talk about that in that regard. Right. Well done. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Thank Estelle, you. thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Most very interesting well. discussion. I hope so, Estelle. <laughs> yes, I enjoy listening to you all. You have so much knowledge. Oh, so that well, I well, well, yeah. Thank you, Rabbi. He has up enough a wealth. tiny, tiny fraction of it and remember it. <laughs> you're learning, you're learning. <laughs> I'm up to 20%. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. All right. Be well, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.